we don't want to go back to our country then we get killed and going back to United States to go in prison before we got deported no I think this is better for us I cannot go back to my home Somalia my family got killed and I cannot stay in United States so that way I run away from United States and I came to Canada I never intended to come to Canada I got scared from Trump you say we should leave your country so we are leaving now. So if it's good for you, fine. We are in the country that loves refugees. Since Donald Trump took office, a lot of refugees don't feel welcome in the United States. More people are trying to flee the U.S. for Canada. Six men and one woman emerged from a field in the United States. Four more asylum seekers being picked up by RCMP officers. Men, women and children picked up in the middle of the night. To cross over from the U.S. into the small Canadian border town of Emerson. Did you just cross? We've had people coming across the border seeking refugee status over the last year and a half, but the numbers have really risen now in the last three weeks. Partly the bigger numbers are because of Donald Trump. You sometimes wonder if what we're doing is the right thing for everyone. And are we going to be able to handle the influx as the numbers grow? with Border Patrol, so. The first weekend when we had a first big influx of 19 overnight, we were housing some of these people in our town hall for 12 hours. That is a little bit of a security risk before they've been really checked out, so. It's dividing the community a lot. Some of them are saying, let's stop. One of the routes of where they enter into this area is along the railway tracks coming into Emerson. From here, that road over there is almost a dividing line, just slightly into the bushes there would be the actual international border. Uh, they're coming over, uh, sometimes walking five, six, seven miles in an attempt to come here. It's very cold, and it's a very dangerous activity that is occurring. We get called to the refugees more in the winter for cold injury, frostbite. Every Friday and Saturday night, the pagers seem to go off and Obviously, we still have to take care of our own calls. The numbers have really increased, and we're, we're just somewhat concerned, definitely, about the, the spring thaw. It's going to be definitely high water. There's no doubt about it. The surge of asylum seekers who cross the border on foot near Emerson continue to strain agencies. The refugee situation here in Manitoba shows no signs of stopping. Last night alone, at least 27 people crossed into Emerson. There are reports of at least two men who lost all their fingers to frostbite after a 10-hour journey across the border. When we step our feet in the snow, you have to put your hand to help your leg come out. That's the part of it when our hands get frozen. I would say, yeah, you're worth it to go back to my country and get killed yeah. and lost my 10 fingers. If going back to United States in the prison, I would say that this is worth it. But we didn't pray for it. You, you run from your country because of your safety and you came to United States, they take you to prison. I serve time with a reason in detention sometimes 16 months. I never commit crime. I never hurt nobody. So I was scared to go back to my country. That time I ran away, I just came to Emerson. I was chained my hand, my waist, and my leg. And I feel bad because I am somebody who is coming to seek a salon. I am not a criminal, but I'm being treated like one. When Trump came in, three of my friends got detained. So I, I started panicking, to be honest. I was like, oh my God, maybe they, they don't want me here. I had everything going on. I was just waiting for an interview. I was just waiting for someone to hear my story, but I couldn't get it, you know? And then they took my AD card. 
So you, you put yourself in that situation where you're supporting your family and your family is kind of like, you know, excited. Maybe now you'll get this, maybe this year you'll get your interview and then we can come over there and then we can be a family again. Since 2008, I didn't see my mom. You think of that. And then now, people are getting detained. So if I get detained and I got deported, so it's, it's like, it's a matter of, you know, life and death. We're talking about the safety of our nation, the safety and security of our people. This ruling makes us look weak, which, by the way, we no longer are, believe me. In the winter, the only cases I've gotten are the ones that are people who walk across the border. 29, 30, 31, 32, oh, and 33 and 34. 34 people, 34 lives. That's more than a year and a half's worth of clients in less than two months. The Safe Third Country Agreement says that if you are physically in the United States, period, and if you were to come to Canada at a border crossing at a checkpoint, Canada would deny you entry and send you back to the U.S. and U.S. would be required to take you back. Hence, people don't come to the border crossing. And the Canadian left, of course, thinks the safe third country agreement should be scrapped so that people are not putting their lives at risk. Under the safe third country agreement, refugees cannot apply for asylum in Canada if they are already in the U.S. Many refugees are crossing the border illegally, risking life and limb because they have no other option. The Reeve of Emerson, Manitoba, says another 29 asylum seekers illegally crossed into his community on Sunday night alone. Where is the plan, Mr. Speaker? When will the Liberals finally take action and regain control of our borders? Over the past few weeks, that at least around 50% of the asylum seekers do have some serious criminality record. CBSA hasn't confirmed those numbers, but anyone convicted of crimes ranging from theft to manslaughter to drug trafficking may not be allowed into Canada. For the first time since the recent influx of asylum claimants started, federal politicians have come to Emerson to talk to the people about the impact it's having on the community. What are you hearing from your party as to how things may actually change here? Well, the first phase is to come and see what's happening, listen to the locals and understand what we need to do to help them. I think I would like to say, you know, that the concerns that people are expressing are absolutely legitimate. We should be all concerned about our neighbors. We should be looking after our communities, whether it's in a small city or in a town like Emerson. But our systems are some of the most secure in the country. Why can't these people, people come to our country the way everybody else had to? The legal way. Well, they're going to be processed in a legal way, for sure. It's been going on for over 150 years, this situation. And it's getting worse. This is Canada. We have laws. So why can't these people abide by our laws? They're absolutely abiding by the law. It's no, been happening for 150 years. We can't stop something that we started 150 years ago. It's impossible to stop. As long as they do it legally. But not all our ancestors did it legally. They are not refugees. They are not refugees. All right, buddy. People in town, uh, some are very against it, very scared, very nervous. You know, I heard one person say, oh no, I locked my doors. And another person told me that she's got an empty shed in the back and she just want to put pillows and blankets in it for, you know, when they come across and then they can go in there and get blankets and, and uh, be warm. I see it as people in need. jumping across the border illegally and then nothing happens to them. That's what's pissing everybody off. You can't kick them back, I heard. <laughs> and you can't stop them from coming across the border. <laughs> How crazy is that? You need, okay, wait, go jump across the border and let's see what happens. Jail for sure, probably, yeah. for jumping the international border. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I just find it hard to believe that the United States is that unsafe. But the Liberals say, Take them all. Take them all? I have no problem with that. But then give us the resources to take them all. <laughs> well, and then where's the money coming from to support them after our own? That's the beef I got. That's it. Yeah. Boy, things have changed. <laughs>